Okay, welcome to this video. My name is Dave Hurst and uh, I own a Luna caravan with a Truma uh, for combi heater. And uh, I've had a few problems in the colder weather trying to get the heat through the electrics. Now, I've been checked it up online. It looks as though it's most likely the heating elements. So I was thinking it might be 1,600 or 700 pounds for a brand new combi heater but it might just be that we're looking at replacing the elements in the boiler. Not an easy job though, because it requires removal of the unit out of the seats to be able to do that. So I'm gonna go through that now. And for anybody following, hopefully this solves your problem, especially if you're getting a, a, a caravan that's getting to the kind of age where the heating elements are wearing out. So uh, if you watch me, I'll talk you through what I do. Uh, and give you some feedback at the end. So before I do anything else, the heater is under located under this area here of the seat, which is going to require removing the wooden board at the end to get down to that. But first things first, making sure all electrics are switched off, safety first, um, and making sure um, that we've switched off any power supply there that uh, might go to any of those sections. Also keeping in mind, there is a 12 volt supply to this unit. The heater unit itself is under the seat at the end. So that's where we're gonna be working to remove this. And as you can see, the replacement elements of which I've got two, I think only one of them's actually uh, stopped working. But at this point in the caravan's life, I think it's better to put both in as new and then I don't have to do the job all over again. And having removed the cover to the corner, looking under the seat, we can see that to access the heating unit, we're going to need to free it from the exhaust pipe and disconnect the water and gas supply to the side. Removing this outer pipe does reveal a smaller inner pipe for which a different screwdriver head is required. That then frees up the area to access removal of the four venting pipes which supply warm heat to the various areas of the caravan. Through these beige coloured pipes, uh, note that each pipe is pinned in place with a Phillips headed screw which will need to be removed before the pipe is pulled out of the socket. electrics to the unit are accessed through this front cover. The upper section is the 12 volt input and thermostat control. And note that removal of a full electrics cover requires a special screwdriver head, not just a simple Phillips. This is the head I happen to have in my collection. Here we go, removing these wire connectors. I've already taken a photograph just to remind myself of where everything goes for putting it back later on. And then the data cable. That should allow us to take this panel off and access the other wires below. There we go. And you can see down here, we have the power wires coming in, 240 volt supply. And these wires running out at this side supply the heating elements inside the heater, uh, which we're going to access from the side of the unit once we've got the unit out. 
slight change of plan here and on the grounds that I can't get my screwdriver in to be able to remove those wires until the unit's a bit more flexible to get at it I'm going to ease the pressure of the main 240 volt wire going in uh, just to give us a bit of flexibility to move in and around this area and I can sort those wires out later and then I'm going to remove these connectors here that's the hot water out connector which should involve pulling back that little sleeve and releasing that from there and then there is a gas inlet down there and down below if you just see that under there the uh, cold water in so I'll do that now and having removed those uh, that gas and that water should now allow me to safely get down to the anchor points uh, to remove the unit from the caravan and then we'll be able to lift it out of the gap and do some maintenance on it. And having removed the anchor into the unit, we should be able to slide the unit about and facilitate its removal from the corner of the seat area. Now it looks as though the unit won't come out through this upper gap here, so I'm going to have to remove a few of the water pipes to clear a way to slide it out in the other direction. Oh, I've the so having given the uh, caravan base a good clean in the corner now uh, we're going to work on this unit we want to remove this end so that we can take off the screws that connect the wires to the uh, heater electrodes that go into the unit so that means taking out these screws at these uh, fixing points And you can see having revealed the end that the um, covers there come to the end of each of those heating terminals. So there are four of those that's going to be uh, unscrewed, taken off, so that the uh, heating elements can be slid out at the other end of the unit, new ones brought back in. So each of these has uh, an electrical connection held on by a small nut, which I'll remove each one. We'll come back to putting those on again later. But you can see there's the end of each of the terminals. I want to clear all of those off so they're free to be removed and taken through the other side of the unit. So knowing that uh, I have a particularly bad memory, I've actually stuck some little labels on there to remind me what's going to go 
to what in terms of each of those cables and labels. I'm sure other people have better memories than me, but just in case, make sure nothing goes wrong. That's how I've decided to do it. And now moving to the rear of the unit, we want the rear panel to be taken off. That's held in place by these bolts here at the four locations. So we'll do that now. And then that should give us access to the uh, various parts that we need to remove. So as you can see now we've taken off the rear panel and that exposes the ends of these two elements that run all the way through the middle of the unit. It's now a case of easing those out, pulling them out this side and then putting the new ones in. And of course that's the reason for having to remove the unit from the corner because we wouldn't be able to get it out of the end with them needing so much room to be pulled through. So let's give that a go now and see what happens. I've already seen when other people have attempted this, that sometimes these rods do get quite stiff and difficult to move and might require a little bit of a tap through. So that might need to be done. I can feel a bit of give in these, but they're probably gonna need a tap from the other end, which we'll do, and then we'll see where that gets us. Now, so far as predicted, this stage is taking a little bit longer. These uh, elements are well stuck due to the years of uh, heat. You can feel the kind of ridges where they've expanded inside and got stuck into the edge of the uh, cylinder there. So I've had to resort initially to a few bangs of hammer with wood and other elements to start knocking that through and now it's just going to take quite a bit of hammering and force to bring these two parts out uh, so if i'm being truthful if you hit this problem this is now take it steady don't damage the unit but you do have to do it a little nibble at a time until you've got the element out So having managed to knock this old element out there, you can see it alongside the new one, uh, just how dark and expanded it has become along those edges. So the new one hopefully is going to go in that same hole. Uh, we'll check that there's no obstructions by shining the light down the hole. And you can see they're looking down that long avenue. That's the gap that we just had to remove the tubing from shining the light in at the other end to give us some idea how narrow that gap is. But I am assured from what I've read that it is important that these rods uh, do touch the sides of that very tightly so as to transfer the heat into the chamber. So I'm now going to insert the new rod down these channels and hope we can get a nice smooth run all the way along so let's hope this works for us seems to be going okay so far and of course we have to be able to fit the gaskets at the other end also and then moving back to the other end of the unit you can see those two electrodes have both come through there we're gonna uh, insert the two gaskets that go with that onto each end until they're nicely in, pay, in place and then it'll, it'll be a case of reattaching um, those wires to operate it uh, numbers one and two which obviously I marked earlier just to make the job a little bit easier and we'll do the same with the other one and having done that I just want to make sure that 
these two terminals and not damage them whilst installing them so we'll put the multimeter back on again and we get a nice reading 51 there so that means that, that uh, installation should work well i'll now do the other one and with uh, those two sets of heaters both uh, fully installed there it's just a case of reconnecting the wires uh, putting all the casing back putting it back under the seat basically a reverse of everything that we've done so far so i'll get on with that now And there we have it, all fixed back in place. Uh, I'll finish off the boarding later. The only thing left to do is to switch the unit on and uh, find out whether it works. So here we go, here's our heating unit. We'll, uh, we're on electricity, put it to electricity two to make sure it brings on both of the heaters. We'll give it a good old zap at 30 and then find out what happens. Now the unit's clicked, making a noise, vents uh, blowing, just a case of uh, giving it a few minutes to get up to heat and we'll check that everything then is working fine. So there we are, there's heat coming through each of the vents now. System seems to be working. Um, in total that cost me £136 to get the replacement parts off eBay. Obviously only time will tell just how long those new parts will last, but uh, let's hope we're going to get a good few more winters out of that one. Um, other than that, no additional cost, just use the tools that I've already got in the home but a good few hours of work. I'd have said at, at least four hours of effort put into that one. Hope this video has been helpful to somebody in the same way that uh, I found a YouTube video that was helpful for me. And uh, do tune in again for some of my other videos. See you.